Can we pose for a thumbnail real quick? And with that, hi guys, let's get started here just momentarily. Hey everyone, Joel Anson here, and today we're outside Black's Burgers. Black's Burgers in Epsom, which is London, like it's like a, I don't know if the suburb of London is, is correct, but it's like London, United Kingdom nonetheless. Epsom, a little south. Guys, you're doing the Impossible Cheeseburger Challenge. So this is literally a challenge with 60 burgers. Six, zero, this is nuts. This is by far the biggest burger challenge I've ever seen in regards to like having a number of burgers. So it is 60 of their different burgers from the menu. Um, from my understanding, they pretty much shake them up. Like the whole thing is like, they call it like burger roulette. So it's not like we get to look at a menu, at least I don't think, and be like, I want 10 of the X burger, 10 of the Y burger. From my understanding, it is just 60 pretty much random burgers throwing on all their different toppings. Uh, kind of whatever they want. So that's very, very, very interesting. Should be cool. Um, I'm joined today by my good friend, Mr. Scott, Scott Eats, and a, another special guest, a gentleman that I'll be meeting here shortly for the first time, Mr. Max versus Food. So guys, this should be really, really cool. We are gonna have one hour to complete the challenge. And guess this, guys, guess this. So not only is this undefeated, not only is this literally about an impossible challenge weighing apparently, um, they said about 12 kilos. Uh, which will weigh it. We've got as a scale will actually weigh it, get you an actual weight. But yeah, roughly 12 kilos, which is like 25, 26 ish pounds, apparently. Guys, the price on this, if we do not complete it, is almost 600 pounds. It's like 580 or about 600 pounds, nonetheless, which is like, I don't even know, 800 to a thousand dollars something like that so guys this is insane huge value challenge so hopefully we do not fail this that is for sure uh, but besides that guys let's head in and let's have some fun like we said i'm just gonna call it a thousand dollars so a thousand dollar 25 pound burger challenge said to be impossible absolutely undefeated wish us luck let's have some fun and before we get into some delicious burgers other things sponsor this video being husk japan Currently for my viewers, Husk is offering 70% off their Japanese inspired knives and a 30 day money back guarantee. So click that link down below and now let me tell you about the knife itself. Being the world's first premium control kitchen knife, not only does it offer you this lovely grip and handle which makes cutting easy, but it is incredibly sharp and it's incredibly well designed. It has an ergonomic design with the curved blade and the grip hole, which enables better precision when chopping or cutting. Similarly, that adds a level of safety and durability. The knife is not gonna slip and you won't be applying unnecessary force, which may actually hurt your hands. It's very light and balanced. Like I said, only weighs 252 grams and the blade is made from incredibly high quality Japanese stainless steel. It features a hygienic rustic style hand and a 38 degree blade edge, which ensures extreme sharpness. And husk knives come razor sharp out of the box and they'll stay that way for years. This oak handle, the attention to detail, you can really tell a lot went into this. But like I said, currently for all my viewers, Husk is offering 70% off. So click that link down in the description. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee so you can actually test the knife out. So you got nothing to lose. So with that, like I said, click the link down in the description below. Grab yourself a knife today and that will get the rest of the video. Hi everybody, so here we are guys with the impossible cheeseburger challenge here at Black's. It is absolutely insane, literally the biggest cheeseburger challenge I've ever done. There is nowhere on earth that has 60 freaking burgers in the challenge. This is absolutely insane. We have literally an international team here to try to conquer this. Um, so again, we do have these 60 minutes. We have so many different flavors, um, everything like we have peanut butter on these. We have, there's just, I'm just gonna, I'll tell you in a voiceover. We have everything on this, so put it that way. Uh, but at that, guys, ready to get started? Ready. Absolutely. All right, it's good. looking good. I'm so pumped. And actually, sorry, but it's actually 61. I said 60. They got one more on top just to crest the pyramid. So 61. At that, um, gentlemen, yeah. you want to get started? Let's yeah. do it. Straight off the top. 
Yeah. I'll just grab right off the top, I guess, yeah. here, guys. Okay, and we have a few skewers in there. You definitely be mindful of those. You want to grab one? Do you want to grab it? Or is here, I'll distribute it. Here we go. Yeah. So, gentlemen, how about we get started? I'll grab this one. We'll save the count of five, four, three, two, one. Cheers. 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 Woo! Mmm. Burger. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of a deluxe McDonald's cheeseburger. Just very simple, cheese, ketchup, mustard, and delicious. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Is a, well, if it falls at this point, everybody just, it is what it is. I'll put it that way. As long as it doesn't fall forward, because some of you are having burgers on the floor. Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are trying the absolute craziest burger challenge I have probably ever seen. 61 burgers, absolutely insane. And so much diversity. Just like, obviously the ones we were starting out with were kind of what they called like more standard American. But man, as we got to the bottom, there were some really interesting toppings on these. And let me tell you all about them. So the first ones are just like standard American. There's your cheese, meat, ketchup, mustard. You can do you have their match? Just plain, plain ones again. And, yeah. the, and all the good ones are, not good ones, all the top ones are down the bottom. Yeah, it's gonna get very roulette style in a bit. So just to briefly recap, so we did have 60 minutes to complete the 60 and then plus one burger, so 61 burgers. Um, absolutely crazy challenge though, I mean just this was absurd. Uh, but we had everything from toppings like peanut butter, we had bacon, we had uh, bacon jam, we had caramelized onions, we had mayonnaises, we had burger sauces, we had jalapenos, we had pickles. We had uh, caramel, like, uh, like like fried onions, like crispy fried onions. Um, there was pretty much everything you could imagine here. We had blue cheese, we had barbecue sauces, we had all kinds of, I probably repeated myself, all kinds of everything. This was uh, an effort to build it up, we'll put it that way. It was not easy to stack. It's easier to unstack, let's put it that way. I kind of knew some of the toppings kind of going into this because I was watching them like kind of assemble the burgers in the kitchen. So I had like at least a rough idea kind of what we were getting, you know, and some hot sauces there. Very good. I have some barbecue sauce back. You guys can't really see me dipping it. Well, your hot sauce, bubble sauce. Dip. My ketchup's just right on the, the paper, so I can't show you that. But. Yeah, it looks like we got a coleslaw cheeseburger here, so that's the uh, the first Russian roulette. Oh, it's a Korean I think it's mm. Peanut butter, I got a peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. It's nice, it works quite well together with the cheese. I was a bit unsure. So, so we uh, had a little discussion beforehand whether peanut butter went well with cheese on a burger, so I was kind of iffy about it. Max, Max was for it, so let us know in the comments below. Cheese, peanut butter, do they go together on a burger? I'm gonna simplify that. Give me a hashtag cheese or hashtag no cheese. I am team no cheese. I do like peanut butter on a burger, but not with cheese, everybody. They do have bacon jam on that, I think the peanut butter one now. I'll take peanut butter and bacon. One thing which was pretty interesting is like the day of, I asked the gentleman like, hey, what's the price on this? He took out a menu, added it all up, and he was like, it's like 586 pounds. So basically 600 pounds. But then later on in an article, I saw him write that like it was uh, the value, like I guess this special challenge deal was two or 300 pounds. So technically you may or may not be able to get 60 burgers for two or 300 pounds. Just saying, I'm not sure. But otherwise going by, I guess the value or the menu price or whatever price he told me the day of, this is worth about 600 pounds, which is absolutely, I mean, it's just a, Crazy number. Caramelized onions with peanut butter? Yeah. How's the combination go? It's good because it's sweet and savory. It kind of works quite well. It's a bit like pp and but a bit more savory. Black's as a restaurant is a big supporter of local food banks. Let's try this. So this is the one with, uh, this is actually the 61 burger. We have all veggies on here. We raced to that last one and Joel got to it first. So kudos. Oh, I could have left it. Sorry guys, what you want. <laughs> this one actually has caramelized onions on it. Which is, I, 
nice, nice change up. And whether we were going to win or lose, they were gonna make a donation to a food bank as per our attempt. Definitely proportioned really well. But let's just marvel at how many burgers we have in front of us still, guys. This is nuts. It was an absolute pleasure to be eating with our good UK friend, Mr. Max. Here, I'll grab, I'll grab a roulette here. First roulette. Just for the sake of doing it, I am trying to go from the top, but just so I can join the roulette club. But here, I won't even look, I'll just bite it. Maybe bacon jam? Ba uh, I think maybe it's bacon jam or caramelized onions and lettuce tomato. And burger sauce. I think I'm gonna use that. All right. Try this one here. Is this uh, caramelized onions? We got some tomato, lettuce. Okay, thank you so much. spoiled the real life, I'm just kidding. All right, well, fair enough, fair enough. I think we're on to some of the last American ones at the job, which one come more, and then we're into roulette. Mm. I'm still an American. Might have a little bit of spice in there, too. Huh? Mm hmm. Is that the Franks, maybe? Maybe buffalo? Maybe some buff, yeah, some buffalo sauce in there. I'm gonna dip it up. And besides that, there's quite a bit of natural commentary throughout this video, so I believe that's pretty much all the information. And thank you for the lovely help we have today. We have some helpers helping us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Say hi, Laura. Say hi. <laughs> So with that everyone, sit back, relax, hopefully you enjoy this crazy burger challenge and let's see if we can beat the impossible. I think that's the last of the Americans. We're coming on about eight and a half minutes in. No shortage of food, that's for sure. This is one of the ones with the kimchi that Scott had. <coughs> Excuse me guys. Call us the chef. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo! That was a good burger. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. Red cream coleslaw. And then definitely like a poison kind of a flavor. And poison. Careful with that word. <laughs> and five sponge. I was gonna ask. Is that some poison? Poison? No. Poison sauce. Not poison. Poison, poison yeah. <laughs> You gotta yeah, pronounce your like H. <laughs> well, it's, it's the American accent. Yeah. Yeah. It's my, yeah, there you go, guys. <laughs> Hashtag, do I have an accent? He's been spending too much time in the US. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> that you've lost our home heritage accent. <laughs> wow. Canada. Uh, I think we got some kind of roulette. <laughs> Woo, that was a good one. Excuse me. Compliments to the chef. I think there's bacon jam or caramelized onions. Definitely some, maybe some mayo. Max, how are you going over there? Mm -hmm. Which flavor is that? So I'm trying to figure out. It's caramelized onions, but it's also got like some hot sauce in it. Okay, okay cool. So it's an interesting combination. Lots of burgers in. I don't know how many, but we're 11 minutes in. Max, how are you doing? Not too bad, yeah. I'm looking forward to diversifying the flavor a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of excited to see what this is. Yeah, definitely keep grabbing. Like I said, I think we're pretty much all through the standard American ones. Just down to all the mixed. Scott, how you doing, brother? You guys are doing great. Doing really good. Oh yeah, it's tasting really good. So uh, yeah, absolutely delicious. They're juicy burgers. All the flavors, no flavor fatigue. It's you know now that we've tried the roulette here, so uh, really, really good. Those are just almost more skewers than burgers out there. So uh, it looks pretty don't jinx us. Yeah, that's a thick layer. I will say, look, we can actually like you can actually see us now. We're not just floating heads. Oh yeah. 
And that one, I, I know what you have, but that one had hot sauce on it too. Mmm. Like the way it comes in, I think it was caramelized on the hot sauce. Mm. Pretty good actually, I like yeah. that. This one I got, I don't know, I guess I should be best biting it, then yes. Mine was a little bit different as well. It had the caramelized onions and peanut butter, so. Uh, it's interesting. It's a little I think it's different. a bacon jam. Bacon jam, okay. Yeah, this is a, yeah, it's the same. It's interesting. I think there's mayo on this one, maybe. Caramelized onions. This one looks like it's got a few jalapenos in it. I swear I crossed those off, but uh, we're going to give it a go anyways. <laughs> a like, little surprise for me. I think there's like three with, hot, with a couple of beers. Mm. Oh, okay. And a gherkin as well. <laughs> your favorite. Yeah, your real favorite. Mm. <laughs> I love it, guys. What do you think? Do you guys like gherkins? What's your pickles? <laughs> if you're not familiar. If you're not familiar. Hashtag pickle, hashtag no pickle. I like pickles, I'm a hashtag pickle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Max pickle, drop, no pickle. Oh yeah, no, 100%. All right, fortune half inch, everybody. Lots of burgers. We are making it through. Are we doing good? Let's go. Grab one over here. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like, the even the, the distribution. Yeah, to try to do the distribution. I have no clue what this one is. Mm. Crispy onions, barbecue sauce. Okay. Don't tell me it'll different. All right, so we're 1502 in. Got about uh, two thirds of the way done. Uh, the, the, is it, you get some barbecue sauce yet? Not yet. Mm. You will. Mm. And there's a, I also have some extra here so I can really taste it. It's very hot. Uh, Friedrich Hickory. A little hickory smoke. No. Is it sweeter? <clears throat> the barbecue sauce over here, if you found it a lot sweeter than the ones in Canada or America. Yeah. yeah. I don't think so, yeah. No. I think I like American more. Yeah. More Canadian. I think what we call it barbecue sauce in North America is a lot of. Um, there's a broader spectrum because we have many different barbecue sauces. Depending on like your region, yeah. um, whereas over here it's like an incredibly sweet, very sticky sauce. In North America, you can get a wide variety of things to be classified as barbecue sauce. Because excuse me, if you're in barbecue regions, and excuse me, it's all a little different. So I had a bad experience with jalapenos the other night, so that's why I'm kind of uh, a little bit reluctant to have that as my burger of choice. Our 19.45. Guys, how we doing? Whew. Good. Really good? Yeah. Doing really good, yeah. No shortage of burgers. Max, your favorite? Peanut butter is still, I'm still liking the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. All the yeah. dried, dried onions. Okay. I haven't had a peanut butter over there. I was going to say, do you have a lot of peanut butter over there? I did, but these ones aren't. No, this one is. Maybe let like Joel have one. He hasn't had one yet. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you? Or 
No, no. No, it doesn't I, have cheese. I, I actually love peanut butter on a burger. We'll find out. <laughs> some, of, some of my favorite all-time burgers have had peanut butter on them. <laughs> I just don't want them today. I guess I'll look for ones with pickles, so Scott doesn't have to eat those. No, it was the it was the jalapenos or jalapenos. There's a lot of cheese on this one. I think this one got multiple slices. I have like a half a centimeter of cheese. Mm. Which, if you guys don't know, is Joel's favorite, so... I don't know how many burgers we eat. But after 23 minutes of burgers, and chill, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of burgers. We'll put it that way. <laughs> but, keep on trekking. We don't have any left. <laughs> I'll be able to get this undefeated burger chops down. Not jinxing it. Mmm, jalapenos. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost this game. I haven't had any yet. I thought you had the peanut butter one. Well. Of course. Uh, is that good? That's actually very good. I lose again. Three that have jalapenos, I, just, I don't hey, know. I tried to take that one, guys. Scott said it was good. <laughs> By the way, if anybody was counting how many burgers this was this whole time, like how many we each ate, comment down below. I wasn't counting, but if anybody was, comment down below. Grab this one before Scott does. And more uh, mayo, barbecue sauce. Scott, the last one. Right, do it. Good job, Scott. 27. 45 in. It's a barbecue sauce with some mayo, <clears throat> cheese, and jalapenos. Jalapenos. It was five though. What are the chances? <laughs> I'm never actually playing Russian roulette. <laughs> yeah, the odds have not been in your favor. Definitely a large, large, large challenge. There's no, no doubt about that. No shortage of burgers here today. Final time was it 29 29? 29 29. Guys, it was meant to be. It's like 11 11, but it has to do with eating 61 burgers. 29 29. So, that everyone, uh, Scott, yeah. what do you think, man? A lot of jalapenos. No, uh, it was delicious. It was really good. I actually like that style where you're not sure what you're going to get. Uh, like Max mentioned before, you don't get flavor fatigue and you're always excited to try the next burger. So, overall, really good challenge.
Cool. Yeah. Max, what do you think? Yeah, man? really good. I was just happy I was able to hold my own a little bit with you. I definitely think you ate more than me, but they were all really good, like I said. Even the even just the plain cheeseburger ones are like really outstanding. Team challenge, guys. We got it done. No one was counting, except maybe you. Like I said, if you have a number, let me know down below. Just for fun, of course. Um, and that, guys, I, I just want to give a huge thanks to Max, to Scott, um, joining me today. This was an awesome, awesome challenge. I'm glad we got to do it. Um, like you said, undefeated, absolutely massive. I really do think it was like the biggest, you know, burger challenge, at least like by number of burgers that I think. At least in the UK, oh, 100%. maybe. Yeah. I, I really do think in the world, like I said, I've seen like a slider burger challenge with lots of different uh, burgers, but in regards to like just sheer number of full size burgers, there's like I think quarter pound patties or whatever. Uh, they were, they were, that was, that was, that was sizable, that was sizable. Um, at that though, guys, really no complaints. I want to give a huge thanks to somebody here at Black's. Uh, you know, definitely uh, solid burgers, the Russian roulette was a very interesting and kind of cool way to do it. You definitely didn't know what you were necessarily getting, um, which definitely, like you said, it, it shook it up. Yeah. It was like, what am I having here? What am I having here? Um, you know, and so I get that, like I said, no complaints. We do get the meal for free, which is awesome. Should we get more burgers? I hear I hear, I hear them blending something. Is it milkshakes? Is it yeah, milkshakes? you really get milkshakes here, yeah. so you can say milkshakes. Maybe, we'll maybe see, we'll I will see. consider something else. I'll have a peek in the menu. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and that everyone, that's about that. So of course, next time, have another hungry, happy eating. Great time here in the UK. And uh, yeah, Scott, this is departing. So let's be our last challenge together for a little bit. Yeah. For a little bit. Max, this is our first challenge we've done together. Yeah, it's been amazing. Nonetheless, won't be the last. Uh, and then, I got no other words. So, just that, have a lovely day. Can't reach my camera. I'll try to close out, but until next time, everybody, I appreciate you. Until next time, of course, happy eating. I can't do it. I'm just zooming, up, zooming on my hand. Ready? Hi, right, everybody. And here we are. We have made it to Tower Bridge. So we're going to go up there. It's pretty cool. Apparently there's a glass floor somewhere up in there. But yeah, I guess it looks awesome. Very, very noted. Kind of the great big blue... Not, you know, kind of uh, supports. And then the interesting architecture of a dual towered bridge on either side. And right by it, all this green space. Very pleasant, um, but very modern looking. Nothing too, too, too notable. So let's go see what this is all about. And everybody, we are on the Tower Bridge. Not the London Bridge, the Tower Bridge. Looks very awesome. I like it. We're about to enter our tour of the, I guess, towers. But this is very big. It's actually way bigger than I thought it was. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Guys, and the view from this bridge is awesome. I love like just the walking across all the bridges here in London, whether it be the pedestrian bridges or the actual functional vehicle bridges. But uh, this is some kind of a castle or something there. But this is this skyline. It's great right now. That's the shard. You can go up that building. But yeah, pretty dang cool. Might be a little hard to see with the light. But gorgeous over the river here. And you can take one of the ferries to uh, like the terminal right there from where we were. Uh, we might do that on the way back. But yeah, really cool. And then here we got more of London over here. All right, everyone, we made it in. So they actually have a bit of history or info about it. So apparently it took about eight years to build. Looks like they started in 1886, which is crazy. They mentioned about a thousand employees at a time. And they're saying how much uh, like weight they had. Look at this, wow. Okay, so for the divers, way back when in the day, which looked like this, to lay the foundation in the uh, riverbed, they had like, over, like over uh, over 30 pound boots they had over you know what like almost a hundred pounds of weight they had uh, about 22 20 pounds of the, the diving suit they had a helmet weighing like you know over like 50 ish pounds to so 87 kilos so they had like a hundred and I don't know 80 pounds of weight on them 
and it pay up to 10 pounds per minute, which must have been the absolute highest paying job ever back in that day. That's nuts, crazy. With the regards to that pricing, I'm wondering if that's like the equivalent nowadays, because like how much, that would be so much money. Well, <laughs> well, well, here you go. They said they only, it only costs about 11, like 1.1 1, 1, 1 million pounds. So there's no, yeah, there's no way $10 per minute, maybe making a conversion to nowadays. But, they could have built one themselves yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, crazy. But anyway, really, really cool. Um, so apparently it's over 10,000 tons of steel however many, whatever, of concrete. Now we're getting up to the actual, like, elevating points. More histories. Here we had the steel being, you know, put into it in about 1890s. The suspension chains. And up we go. And so I guess it's a drawbridge, or at least it used to be, which probably, you know, makes it why it's so remarkable, which is interesting. These are obviously very, very, very old dated films. And then they set this little, you know, coach up to resemble the era, but crazy everybody. All right, and we made it into the actual thingy thingies, the overways. That's what we're in right now, one of those. So, we have, oh, sorry, we have a pretty cool view of the city on both sides. It's talking about, here's a little bit of history. So, crowded London. People living upstream west of London Bridge had 12 bridges to choose from. Before this bridge was built, London Bridge is used by 120,000 pedestrians, 20,000 each day, wow. So, what's crazy, is that that many people already lived in London. Like it was millions of people already back in the 1800s. Just goes to show how big of a city this is. And then bridging the Thames, Thames River. You know, again, making the new bridge, which is pretty dang cool. Look here, they actually have a, uh, oh, a photo window. That's cool. That's quite a view. So we have, I think I was, this was referred to the financial district over there. This is uh, looking east. And then obviously the, Thames River, the boat cruise is on it. And then kind of over there, which we saw from uh, the other side. And hopefully we can get to the other side, but pretty cool. Let's see some other history. Uh, footbridge, let sail ships pass. They see what we saw now. Yeah. We basically had a contest to see. A contest? A contest to see the bridge design. Oh yeah. And they'll show you a couple of the rejection ones. Oh no way. Yeah. Cool. And then they show you the phone. That's cool. So there you go guys, you had a contest to see who would get to decide or how to design the uh, the bridge. So they had a slide design which would definitely not work. They had a swing design which I think would have just been a horrible idea. Again, not recommend. I'm glad that was rejected because I don't think it'd be standing the way it was today. Another swing design. Again, probably not be standing the way it is today. More swings. Uh, maybe. Rejected, okay. A lift. Again, probably would not be operating today if it was. Imagine the horses, how crazy they might get. <laughs> yeah, legit. Yeah, you got the horses. A lift, yeah, a lift design just wouldn't work. Crazy, all these ones. Then, yeah, same thing. A lift just, it's not gonna work, everybody. Wouldn't be where it is today. But hey, that that means we're getting really close to what today's design was. A tunnel. I mean, that would have been difficult, but that at least could have been an option, I guess. I can only imagine what it'd be like to bury under the Thames River, though. Thames River. And we have the glass floor, everybody. So I am walking many, 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 many of feet above both the Thames River and the road. I like this, I think that's super cool. So I've done this at like the CN Tower, I've done this in a few places, but this is probably the coolest one because 
This one you can actually see below you and like super cool. So here I'll show you. This is what we look like. Like that is us. Oh, get out of the way. That is us standing over the Thames River and the traffic. Let me know down below if you would walk on this and let me know if you would jump on it. And from the other walkway thingy thing, the west wing they call it, this is the view. Very, very nice. The other view of the Thames River. Uh, similarly, we have another, you know, it looks the exact same structurally. And then we do have, of course, the lovely glass floor again. We'll actually use mirrors up top. I don't know if I just didn't notice that the first time. But that's pretty cool. Look, like there's mirrors. You can see you down below, see everybody. That's actually pretty cool. What does this look like? Let's see. That's what the back of my head looks like. Look, like everybody, you can see the back of my head. Cool. Not bad. A few other fun facts we found out. The bridge had been set, painted seven times. The last time was when it was painted blue as due to the uh, Queen's Jubilee. Before that, it was brown and or cream colors. Um, that was in 1977. It actually stood during World War II, which is pretty phenomenal, with only minor damage of basically like shrapnel or flying debris, which you would have thought it was like a big target. Um, it took 22,000 liters of paint to paint this thing. And the highest number of drawbridges when it was actually lifted was 60. Four, which is nuts. It's a couple an hour. Otherwise, it averaged about 30 a day, which is absolutely nuts to think about. Like, that's a lot of friggin' up and downs, up and downs, you know, back when it was actually operating as, as such, or maybe it's still operating as such. I don't even know. Um, they actually said if this bridge was to, like, be halted, the traffic would just stop in London. And, uh, 1976, they turned from steam like uh, engines to hydraulics to actually. Work. So crazy. All right, and basically, what else we found out? It's still operating drawbridge. Pretty crazy. It only goes about once or twice a day versus you know the old multitude of times. Uh, right? You know, I mean, he said it's a certain days. I mean, it's like three, but it's more like one or twice. And they're uh, like planned. There's no like spontaneity to this. Surprisingly, it only takes 60 seconds for that thing to lift up, lift back down, which is pretty crazy. So now you know. I didn't know it was still operating. And yeah, here's the base of this. Like, look how substantial that is. Crazy thing again. 100 and th what? 30 years ago? Or 140 years ago? They built this thing. 130. Crazy guys. Crazy. Currently for my viewers, Husk is offering 70% off their Japanese inspired knives. So with that, like I said, click the link down in the description below. Grab yourself a knife today.